every day that you get to ride in a amazing car, but it's not every day that you actually get to go with a legend, a Volkswagen legend. <laughs> Ron, I can't thank you enough for your time. This this is awesome. This well, is awesome. I'm I'm happy to do it. Uh, I uh, very much love this car, so talking about it is pretty easy. <laughs> you won't mind if I keep my eyes on the road. <laughs> nope, not at all. Not at all. Oh, I love that sound too. Listen to this, folks, when we take off here. Just the sound is beautiful. Oh, this is this is something else. Now, while we're driving, uh, tell me real quick, what year is this car? This is a 1960. The last year mm -hmm. of 36 horse, although we have slightly more than that. Okay. The last year of split case gearbox. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's got everything I wanted. I was, uh, well, we'll talk about this later, but I looked yeah. for a long time to oh, find no, this car. I bet. And I mean, I'm looking at the shifter here and obviously here's the name, Sunny. <laughs> Sunny, I like it. Okay, you'll have to tell me about that one later. <laughs> In the meantime, let's enjoy this little drive. was in it. It's a Jack Sacchetti built. Mm -hmm. He's an old friend of mine. Of course, I took it apart. I just, uh, <laughs> I can't leave well enough alone, so. <laughs> yeah, when I first got it, it was 2276 cc's. Uh-huh. So now it's 2332. Okay. I put a little bit bigger crank in it. Uh-huh. Uh, it made, uh, Almost 180 through the muffler on oh, no my kidding. dyno. Wow. But yet you can see it cruises along just just fine. No, absolutely beautiful. I mean, it rides nicely and it sounds great. It has to run good, look good, you know, and, and it has to be a Volkswagen. So how often do you take Sunny out for a ride? Uh, at least once a week, if not more. Okay, just to keep the blood flowing. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> My wife thinks that everything is great about this car, except why do I have a radio? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Do you ever listen to it? Well, when I'm stopped. <laughs> uh, how many times have you had people, if any, come up to you and ask you if you want to sell it? Well, I turned down $35,000. Wow. One guy came up and offered me. He yeah. said, no, no, I really want it. And I said, yeah, okay. But I really want it. <laughs> he goes, uh, 35 is a lot of money. I said, yeah, it is. But I look at it this way. I tell people, if somebody handed me 35K mm -hmm. and said, go find a car that you can use to do it, paint it, upholstery it, wheel it, motor it, transit, uh -uh. I, you're going to run out of money before it's ever done. Yeah. And that's assuming you can find a car worth doing. Right, that's true. Very true. Again, finite quantity of cars. Yeah. So enjoy what you have. Yeah. I like it. All right, you guys, a beautiful day here in Yorba Linda, California, and I have the utmost pleasure of being with legendary Ron Fleming. Ron, thank you so much, man. I mean, we just took this ride in your car and just absolutely wonderful. So thank you for that. But Ron, I, I think there's a lot of people that know who you are, but there's a lot of times people don't know a little bit about your background, and I was hoping that you'd be able to share with us, you know, how, how did you get into Volkswagens and eventually we'll work our way into this beauty that you're uh, resting against? Okay, well, real quick, uh -huh. when I was 15 and a half, and like every young person at that time, I was chomping at the bit to go get my license. My dad owned two cars. One was an, off, uh, I call it often Reparo, but it was an Alfa Romeo <laughs> Giuletta Spider. 
red convertible, and a 57 sunroof sedan. Now, he said, tongue in cheek, he said, you can have either one of my cars to drive to get your license and for a while and everything. And he was absolutely, positively sure I would take the Spider. No. I said, I want the bug. <laughs> because I loved it. I had ridden in it with my dad. Um, I was fascinated by what I thought was a fantastic, well, a people's car, you know, mm -hmm. what, what uh, Dr. Porsche at the time set out to do. And of course, I didn't know the history then. Of course, I've become a big affectionado and understand it more. But that was the beginning. I've had numerous oval windows. Uh, one of my favorite cars I've had in the past was a 71 bay window sunroof bus. And I can't leave well enough alone, so I put a three-liter Porsche 911 motor in it. Oh, my gosh. It would do about a two-foot wheel stand. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I'd go skiing back in those days when I did that, and I'd go up the mountain blowing off BMWs and all kinds of European exotic cars with my VW bus. <laughs> so throughout the years, uh, I've had numerous cars. We don't need to go into all that detail, but... Uh, one, de one car I'll tell you about, and this is an example of how I go about it, I decided, I had had a couple of 911s, and I decided I wanted a 72 911S coupe. I wanted it to be black with a sunroof. Hmm. I looked well over a year, and I finally found the car I bought in Palos Verdes. Um, the only thing it was missing was a sunroof. And I paid $7,900 for it in wow. 1976. Wow. It was like, what, about three years old then. And I say, I say the price, too, because I recently, about a year ago, sold the car for over 20 times what I paid for it. So I think of my black Porsche, which I loved, as uh, my best Roth IRA or uh, <laughs> Keogh plan or, or whatever you want to call it. So, fast forward to uh, around the late 2010, I think it was, I decided I had been going with my black Porsche to DKP events because uh, I believe that once a Panzer, always a Panzer, and they accepted me and let me come along, but I decided I want a car. And uh, I didn't really want to have to do all the work, you know, uh, this is, uh, I was in my 60s, and uh, so I started looking, and I had um, a couple of provisions. I wanted a car that was nicely done, that maybe somebody had fallen in out of love with, or his wife had fallen in out of love with it, <laughs> and he needed to sell it. And the, the provisio was it had to be what I call a big back window, not an oval window, because at this time in my life, I don't do this <laughs> like I used to, so I needed better vision. It had to have a sunroof, and it would be nice if it had some nice parts and pieces on it, a and I didn't have to work on it too much. Well, I looked for almost two years. I saw this car, which I call Sunny, based on the sunroof. Um, I name all my cars, by the way. The Porsche was Blackie, and the <laughs> Honda is Watson, because it's an element, and I call that elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> my Va Vanagon is Vincent, Vincent Van Gana, not Go, Vanagon. Van anyway, it, uh -huh. I name all my cars. <laughs> my like wife's uh, a CRV is Lily, because she likes the name. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I found this car on Samba. Oh, wow. It was advertised for 26.5. And at the time, I was helping my son do some things with some money and stuff, so I thought, eh, maybe I can find a better deal. I kept watching, and one day it went down to 19 Wow! on the Samba. I'm thinking, wow. Next morning, I woke up. It was down to 15 I thought, I got to call this guy. Wow. So I called the guy. The guy's name is John. Um, he was a Porsche guy, loved Porsches. Um, wanted my black car when he saw it. And I said, no, no, it's not for sale. <laughs> at the time, it wasn't. Uh -huh. And I looked, he said, please, come look at this car. I can't get anybody to come look at it. Wow. And I thought the pictures looked pretty reasonable. And he was in Seal Beach. 
So on a Saturday afternoon, I took my dear pal Bunch uh -huh. and my French friends um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> down there, um, uh, Kiki and, uh, um, oh, come on, old, oh, you know, old man. <laughs> anyway, I took them with me and we uh -huh. all looked at the car and uh, it really looked nice. I looked underneath and I didn't like the way the transmission looked, greasy and messy, but everything else, as you can see, mm -hmm. looks the way it is. Oh now, I've done a few things, uh -huh. but, but nothing major. Okay. Uh, anyway, the guy said he wanted 15. I said, well, I want to think about it. This was Saturday. Whoa. On the way home, my dear friend Bunch said, okay, so what do you think? I said, I think it's a pretty good deal. He goes, a pretty good deal? He goes, if you don't buy this car, turn around, I'll buy it right now. I said, no, 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 let me sleep on it. I could hardly sleep because the more I thought about it, we woke up Sunday morning and I took Bunch with me again. He gave me a ride down there this time. Now, I've always been a little bit of a wheeler dealer. So when I showed up and I saw the guy, um, he said, yep, 15. And I, I had 13, five in hundred dollar bills, uh -huh. you know? So I said, well, I said, I'm not saying it's not fair, but, uh, this is what I could come up with. And I said, 13, five. So I fanned it out. Mm -hmm. The guy sat there and looked at it and he was doing what I am right now. He was leaning on my car <laughs> and he stepped forward and he went, Whoa. okay, done deal. <clears throat> now, Everyone I know, when they heard about this, I became a car thief. <laughs> I am officially a car thief. Now, the motor uh -huh. is like you see it. I put um, some screens on the top. Okay. The, the exterior was just like you see it, other than I found the correct door handle oh. and and I found one thank you Bob from BBT he sent me one it was a paint <laughs> version and I sent it with a friend of mine to Mexico where they can really do nice chrome it's right. the nicest chrome on the whole car oh my gosh Even that's funny I just grabbed it <laughs> <laughs> and now the other thing too is people that are watching I mean there's finite detail but you look at the key the way that it actually goes and it's vertical yeah yeah that's a 60 only, right? That's right. <laughs> that is cool. So again, wow. I'm pretty, um, pretty um, hell bent for leather about things, and, <laughs> and I had to have the right handle. So that took me another couple of years, and uh -huh. I found it. Uh, I did the transmission. Excuse me, my dear friend Mike Herbert at Rancho did the transmission. Uh -huh. It has a Rhino aluminum case, a quaff differential. Chrome Molly axles, oh freeway gosh. flyer gears, 388 ring and pinion, 082. So this this little baby here will go 125 miles an hour. Wow. I don't usually do that, but <laughs> it's very capable. I love the interior. It was done by um, the guy in Downey, um, Cummings or... I'm sorry, I don't remember his That's name, okay. but it's a nicely done interior. The only other thing I did besides the gearbox, the mm -hmm. door handle, and take the motor apart and make it bigger <laughs> was, and I, this is the best thing I ever did to this car. When you, when you have a cow look car and it's lowered in front, even the third position back, you're like this. Ah. So I found, with the help of my dear friends Ken and Steve, Yeah. Look so notice how my that. seat is back. Yes. I can yes. comfortably sit in the car. That's awesome. And I'm not looking downhill. Oh my gosh. What a cool accessory. Oh yeah. This is the version that was authorized by VW back in the day. Wow. Look at this. And I put in a Jeanberg shifter with mm -hmm. a personalized knob on it. It has the name of the car on it. Look at that. The button there is a two-step, so if I was to get stupid and want to um, <laughs> shoot across an intersection and, and, and make the car go, because uh -huh. if I drop the hammer on it at any time, yeah. revving up, mm -hmm. it'll boil the tires. But if I the two-step holds it at a specific RPM, like 4,200, okay. so I can let the clutch out, and then it leaves, and then I gas it. So <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done any of that. And I'm always, and I have a fire extinguisher with me. Nice. At, uh, at all times. Um, 
So, Ron, you're telling me that everything that I'm looking at, with the exception of the motor being bigger, everything, the, this is the way you found it. Yeah, other than the seat adjuster, the right. transmission, and the shifter. Unbelievable, and yeah, I think you definitely are a car thief. I can't believe you got that for that. I mean... Well, the guy was a Porsche guy. He got the car in trade, and it was in the middle of being finished, so he thought, well, I'll just go ahead and finish it. And he had good people finish it. Right. Um, you know, you can tell by the paint job and the upholstery. <laughs> that is something else. I mean, the wheels are absolutely stunning. Everything about this car is stunning. And of course, the sound. I mean, that's incredible. Incredible. Hey, so, so I'm very happy to be out here with you because sunny and the sunshine is just makes me happy. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. And I love the fact that obviously you've got the appropriate uh, license plate there. Yeah. So you got lucky with that. Yeah. You've got the, the cool license plate frame, of course. Yeah. Now, real quick, considering that, you know, obviously it says DKP bug and it says, uh, you know, obviously you got your DKP badge on here. Tell me real quick, um, you, uh, I mean, you mentioned that you were a Panzer before you had your Porsche? Oh, I was a Panzer with a 54 black oval window. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, it's an interesting story. I'll probably talk about it. I'm doing a podcast with Bunch this Saturday. Very cool. And Bunch was the one that got me into the club. Okay because he came to Westphalia Motors, which was an independent place. I went to um, um, Ballard Motors in Anaheim, let them that. send me to Culver City to the factory school for six weeks while I was getting paid. <laughs> and then two weeks after I got back, I quit and went to work for an independent because independents at that time uh -huh. paid 50%. Oh. So 50% of the labor, I thought, wow, okay, hmm. good. So I started out working at independent I ended up working at a couple of performance shops because I'm a performance freak. But anyway, mm -hmm. back in the day, Bunch came to Westphalia Motors. I put a Porsche clutch in his car, uh -huh. warned him about it, said, take it easy for a couple of days till the diaphragm loosens up a little bit. Because if you go out and pop it, it'll burn the tires. But if you're not careful, you'll break an axle. Oh. Called me that same afternoon when I got done with the car. He goes, you were right. <laughs> oh, no. I broke an axle. So he came down and I fixed that for him. And he kept saying, well, you, is that your car, the black oval? I go, yeah. And at the time, it had chrome wheels, Porsche hubcaps, uh, you know, um, had a nice exhaust on it. was basically a stock 1600 shoved into a 36 horse. And, uh -huh. and, and the trans was, I changed the trans. But anyway, well, I'll shorten up the story. He bugged me, came to the shop. Three or four times said, we're having a meeting, because in those days they had a meeting about every couple of weeks. Come to the meeting. I kept telling them I really <laughs> didn't want to, because I had a 65 Mustang at one time. That's another story, but <laughs> um, I was in the um, Fullerton Henchman oh, wow. for a while. And uh, car show, cars, clubs, I thought, nah, it's a lot of tr struggle and pain, and so I didn't want to. But finally, I said, okay, I'll come. There were a bunch of nice people, and I'm the reason that they're a hot rod car club now. I infused my idea of performance and stuff on most of the membership. Don Crane, Dave Dolan, Jim Holmes, Greg Bunch. There were a number of guys, Mike Johnston, who were into it, and we went along, and we created performance and the cow look. Wow. Now, it was, we didn't call it that. Yeah. That name was in 1975 by the magazine. I get it. Uh -huh. We just did our cars the way we wanted them. Okay. We never said, oh, we're doing the cow look. Yeah. But it became that. Very cool. And so now there's some folks that remind that remember you from the fat days. How, yeah. how did that come along? Well, I went to work for Gene Bird. And I worked for him for two years, and I got a job for Greg Aronson doing trannies. I ran the front counter and did some cylinder head porting. And I learned a lot from Gene. And after about two and a half years, Greg and I left to go out on our own. Hmm. So we 
We actually worked in his parents' garage in Anaheim for a while. Wow. And the deal was we had two engine stands. They fit into holes in the floor next mm -hmm. to the bench. <laughs> and we worked there, but by 5 o'clock, it had to be back to be in their parents' garage. So oh we had gosh. to take everything up and out. And then one day, we knew a lot of the police in Anaheim. They came by, <laughs> and they said, you guys got to get a building. Why? He pointed outside and he goes, look, there were five VWs parked. They lived right on the corner, around the corner, you know, with jacked up with motors out of them. Or, <laughs> oh, OK, we thought, yeah, well, that's like a real job. But we did. Uh -huh. We got our first building. It was a thousand square feet. And I was pissed because 250 of it was office. And I go, we don't need this. We uh -huh. turned the office into the parts room <laughs> anyway. Along the line, we grew, we got bigger buildings. We did. We really found our niche. We went into sand buggies and off-road. Okay. There, there was yeah. some money in street work and some money in drag racing. We did a number of eye gas motors and mm -hmm. stuff. But there was a whole, at one year at the Mint, we had, there were 95 cars running and 71 of them had my motor in them. No way. So, so we were successful. And we were so busy that Mark Thurber, who I stole from DRF and made come into a Panzer, uh, had a business degree and we went, aha. So he bought in. Then it became, we were Fleming and Aronson High Performance. And then it was Fleming, Aronson, and Thurber. And I said, you know, that looks like a law firm and that's not what we are. So look, I said, we're fat. So we'll be fat. Wow, that is awesome. That is awesome. So now, and I, I, I knew about Fab, but I didn't know when it was just the two of you guys. Yeah. Were there any stickers or t-shirts or is there anything out there? Oh my gosh, here we go. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. There are that. people that would love to have that sticker. I only have a few left. Wow, wow. All right, Siri, sorry. <laughs> Siri wants to be a part of the uh, conversation, huh? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, Ron, that is so cool. That is super cool. L now, let me ask you this. I mean, considering the history that you have with the hobby from since the days that you were a teen and just seeing the evolution of everything in car clubs and everything, what, if there was a message that you could pass on to the hobbyists of the future for this, for, for our beloved hobby, hobby, what, what would that be? What would you say to him? Well, I wrote a column about how to, how to have a cow look car, mm -hmm. you know, and, and in it I say what I did was the best way to go and buy one. Now, what I would say to people that have cars like this, like I do, when I finally get hardly where I can't drive it to get into it, <laughs> I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it at a reasonable price. No, I'm not going to sell it for thirteen five. I'll get more money. But if they don't get passed on uh -huh. to somebody else, mm -hmm. and or if you have children who are uh, you can bring into it, uh, it will advance. We all have to remember there's only a finite quantity right. of these cars. They haven't built them in a zillion years. <laughs> so the ones we have have to move on to somebody else. And I would encourage them to be involved in the hobby, come to VW shows, looking around, don't be in a hurry, and you might find a chance to steal a car. I like that. I like that. <laughs> now, that's awesome, Ron. Well, seriously, I know that we could talk to you forever, and uh, I think maybe we'll bug you for another story some other time, but this, this is awesome. This really kind of encapsulates at least the history of this car and some of your history. So thank you. Seriously, thank you so much for everything that you've done for the hobby and what you continue to do. I think it's impressive. You had mentioned off the air that you've got a birthday coming up in April. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what's that little, uh, that, that milestone? 
uh, 78. <laughs> 78. <laughs> I love it. I love it. 78, and yep. you're still cruising around in such yeah. a cool car, man, and still racing around. Yeah. I think it's awesome. And I'm also extremely thankful that you've, man, you were also saying, you know, you've had some dings here and there. I mean, you survived a pretty gnarly uh, wreck yeah. not that long ago. Yeah. And uh, and here you are just, you know, you're you're like the uh, Energizer Bunny, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. No, that's 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 awesome. What what you know, the other thing that I was going to ask you, too, is every time that I've seen you, you're you're always happy. You're always in a good mood and positive. What's what's the key to that for you? I think it's uh, in loving your life and loving the the chance to walk this planet for as long as you can. And I just enjoy, you know, I'm retired now, but I worked till I was 72. So wow. um, you, know, you get to a point to where I'm not I'm not a wealthy man. I'm not like Edwin, the guy that just won the lottery last year. <laughs> right. But I'm okay, you know. And people ask me to build them a motor, and I have a standard answer. It's no. <laughs> and the reason is, is because I don't know how much time I have on the planet, so I'm going to take that time to do what I want to do. And there are plenty of people out there that can do it. That's so, awesome. And you know, I don't feel like I'm cheating anybody. So, <laughs> well, no. And that, thanks that's for awesome. uh, getting Sunny and I out in the sunshine. <laughs> uh, are you kidding me? This this is a pleasure, and I know that everybody else is going to appreciate it and enjoy it. So, again, thank you, Ron. You bet.